Hi everybody, welcome back to another pronunciation lesson. And um, today we'll be covering B and C words. So if you're interested in learning about those, just tune in today. Um, last week we did the first 50 A words. Um, all the words that we're going through are designed to help you achieve the top top tier band score or I E L T S, um, which is obviously the English speaking test. Um, so I'll be going through pronunciation of these words really slowly. So if you're interested in learning about those, we'll be taking it really slowly. Just pop any comments in the box below if you're struggling with anything, and I'll make sure that we can go back over them. Um, so don't be afraid to just leave whatever you're not feeling comfortable with today, even if it's not necessarily a word that begins with B or C or whatever letter we're dealing with today. Um, it's, it's really helpful for everybody else that's watching as well. If you leave those words below, because um, the chances are a lot more people are struggling with them than just you. Um, I'll just give everybody a couple of minutes to find the live stream and be able to log into it. Um, this is all posted on the Facebook account, um, Merseyside Publishing. Um, it's the IELTS Helpline Facebook page. Um, I'm Laura, I'm an English tutor, and um, I'm looking forward to going through these words with you today. Um, so I'll just give everybody a couple of minutes to find their way onto the live stream, um, and then we'll get started. Like I say, this will be posted on the Facebook page later on. So if you ever need to go back and reference something that's come up in the lesson, then you can hear me say it over and over again, which is obviously useful when it comes to pronunciation lessons. Again, the key to pronunciation is really just repeating, repeatedly practicing and practicing as much as you can. Um, so even though you might be by yourself wherever you are in the world, um, it might be helpful for you to just speak along with me as I'm talking about the specific word. So say it along with me and um, hopefully that will help you to see maybe where our pronunciation differs. This can be particularly useful because as part of the test, you'll be hearing um, English speakers. Um, and it can be useful to get to grips with um, the way that the way that people speak in a normal context compared to how people speak on these lessons, which is obviously a lot slower and maybe more clear. Hi, I guess now the um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Nice to see you again too. I'm just giving everybody a couple of minutes to make it onto the live stream before I start i'll start soon because um we don't have all day this lesson will be going from 10 30 a.m till 1 p.m and um, so it's two and a half hours long if you can't sit through all of it don't worry because we had some issues last week with um people's phones overheating because they've been watching for so long obviously that's really not convenient for you guys so we've decided that we're going to split up the lessons into one hour sessions three of them a week instead of a whole three hour session in one hour which obviously has been causing people's phones to overheat so we'll be splitting it into one hour sessions and i'll hopefully get through one section of the alphabet in each session so today it's b and c words because we've got the full two and a half hours but next time I'll just do D and then E and F. And we'll be going through all these words that will hopefully help you to improve your pronunciation if you're looking towards um, an IELTS um, mock test. So just to also make you aware, from the 1st of September, we'll be offering mock tests on here. Um, so just stay tuned for those. We'll be making a post about when they will become available and you'll be able to get one of those. Um, 
as soon as they become available and I am myself doing some, but we also have some other tutors, so we'll be providing more tests. Um, okay, well, I think we've waited long enough for everybody to join in. So um, again, if you're new here, just leave any comments below with any words that you're struggling with today. Doesn't have to be B or C words, anything that you are finding difficult. Um, my name is Laura, don't be afraid to just pop a comment in the box below and I'll make sure that I get to your word, don't worry. Okay, should we begin? I'll um, take my face off the side of the screen, but I am still here, hopefully you can hear me as we're going through them. So today we'll be doing um, B words, words beginning with B, um, then we'll move on to C words, provided that we have time, and then we also have a test section at the end if anybody did want to come on and do some pronunciation um, and bring somebody on the live um, I'll do that maybe about halfway through so if you're here at about half past 11 I'll be happy to bring you on and we'll we'll have a chat okay so our first word today is this one um, it's ballet ballet the noun ballet so it's a difficult one because that t word can sometimes that t at the end can sometimes um prompt people to pronounce the letter t and um, so it's not ballot ballot it's ballet because it comes from the french and um, and as you may know french never pronounces the t at the end of a word so it's quite difficult to remember that one, ballet. So it's almost as if it has an E-Y at the end of that word, ballet. And um, just to make you aware, if you're not sure, ballet is a type of dance that's performed to music. You may have seen the picture there. Um, it's just to demonstrate really. Ballet. Ballet. And across uh, the words that I'm pronouncing today, will be the same across Australian, American and British pronunciation. There will be no difference there. So if, of course, part of your test is to listen to all different accents. Um, so this word in particular, ballet, um, it's going to be pronounced the same across all three. So at home, if you say it along with me, ballet, and if you just envision when you're pronouncing it, of course, it's not spelled like this. Bal. I suppose even one L E Y. Bal A. Ballet. Okay, because that T is silent, comes from the French. Ballet. Ballet. Okay. Everybody's comfortable with that one. We'll move on to the next one, which is. Um, looks like it's written quite the same and would be pronounced perhaps ballo, but um, this word is pronounced ballot, and that's why I've put these two next to each other because obviously, um, even though they look like they're written the same, they're pronounced the quite opposite of what you'd expect. So for the first one, ballet, we had that T on the end that you, you don't hear, and it's almost like that A sound at the end. Um, and the difference here is ballot, ballot, is pronounced with the T, ballot. So ballot is like the voting system. So um, when your vote is like um, protected, nobody else knows what you're voting for, a ballot. You can also use it to refer to a ballot paper, which is the actual voting slip that you fill out to cast your vote. Ballot. Okay. So if everybody is comfortable with the difference between ballet and ballot, we'll move on to the next one, um, which is a little bit different. This one is bargain. 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 Okay, so this is both the noun and the verb sense. So a noun for bargain 
would be um, the agreement between two parties on a price. So um, we've reached a bargain of £200 for the table would be we've reached a bargain. And then also you can have it as an item that you bought more cheaply than you'd expected. So you could say I the table was a bargain because I got it for only £100 instead of 400 or whatever it is. So you can have a bargain which is reached by the two parties and um, we've reached a bargain or um, a bargain as in something that which is more cheaply than you'd expect it to pay. And then for the verb, which I've just sectioned slightly lower than the others to make that obvious, the verb to bargain is to um, compete or negotiate. Um, usually the price, but you could you could refer to other conditions. So you could um, bargain when you're allowed to take your break, or you could bargain, as I said, the price of something um, to bargain. So um, you would bargain with somebody usually. So if you're looking for um, the prepositional, that like the conjunction in the sentence, then it's going to be to bargain with somebody so again we have the noun and the verb to bargain and then a bargain to get something more cheaply or to reach an agreed price so bargain bargain and um, you might be you might find it helpful to envision um barg and then in without that a because it can be tempting with the a to pronounce it bargain, gain, particularly when gain is um, written like this. So you might split the word into two and think bargain, but no, it should be bargain with just the I-N. Of course, it's not pronounced with just, it's not written with just I-N. So just be aware of that, that it doesn't necessarily look how it is spelt, which as you probably know by now, is very common with English, the English language, frustratingly. Okay, our next word is beneficial. 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 It's an adjective. It's to refer to something where the results are advantageous. They're good. They are positive for you. So you might say, um, you found extra help with I-E-L-T-S, beneficial. I hope that you find my lessons beneficial. Um, you might find it um, helpful if you, oh, let me just click there. If you imagine this first word, bene, um, it's the same, it, it occurs in a lot of different European languages, so Italian, and French, I know for definite, um, maybe some others as well. Bene means good, comes from the Latin. Um, so you might also have seen it in benefit. Um, yeah, beneficial. Um, and, oh, what one was I trying to find then? Um, I don't know, we'll come back to it, but so bene means good. A benefit is um, to benefit from something is to gain an advantage as a direct result of that thing. So you would benefit from extra help, benefit from these lessons, I hope. <laughs> um, you'd find them beneficial. So I hope that, that makes sense, beneficial. The benefit would, of course, be the noun benefit. But you can also use the verb, I benefit from something which is to derive advantage. Okay, so beneficial. You might um, find it helpful to just think of it as in ben, 
it can be um, it goes either way really with that e pronunciation in some regional accents it's going to come across as an i in some it's going to be more of an e so if you hear the difference beneficial and beneficial it might be useful for you to just um, pronounce it phonetically so beneficial like that beneficial beneficial so i found um the extra lessons beneficial this is the one that i was going to move on to next is beneficiary beneficiary okay so a beneficiary is a person who receives advantage from something typically associated with financial advantage for example from a will or from a trust fund um so a beneficiary is the person who gains that advantage derives that advantage so it could be it's not just financial and um, you could be beneficiary of a prize you could be beneficiary of um really anything that you can receive that is um positive it tends to be more used in a more formal setting a beneficiary um and again it has got those positive connotations as well it's got associations with money usually um again beneficiary it's going to be different between regional accents, some of it's going to be ben, e, and then fishery, or depending on the region, you could find ben, e, fishery. Of course, I've, I've written it S H there, but please do be aware that obviously it isn't spelled like that. Ben, e, fish, re. So that, that extra I really isn't necessary in the phonetic. Um, spelling because we don't place a lot of emphasis on the I beneficiary beneficiary okay. but the person who receives advantage from something typically associated with financial advantage e.g. from a will or a trust fund beneficiary this one's obviously particularly useful with beneficial um, for more professional settings um, because it is one of those words that's used slightly more formally um, than the others had been. Um, I've had a comment just below, Bene or Benny. Again, it really is just relies on regional, but for those people who aren't native English speakers, it might be useful for you to just stick to um, Bene with that e, bene, beneficiary, rather than beneficiary. Um, there isn't a huge amount of difference between the two, to be honest, but if it helps you to envision it from bene, the Latin bene, then obviously stick with that for your pronunciation, just to keep everything more constant and um, easier to remember, I think, as well. Okay. We'll move on to the next one if everybody's comfortable with that one we've got bias bias again a really really tricky one bias and um, it's it's one of those words that i think if you haven't pronounced it before and you see it written you'd find it quite daunting um, and difficult to wrap your head around those two um consonant those two vowels next to each other can sometimes be quite differently pronounced in different words so i understand if you maybe find that one a little bit um scary on first impressions bias okay so that's the noun which is to have an inclination towards a person group or opinion in such a way that is construed as unfair so bias um i have bias towards um my friends i have bias towards my family 
I have bias towards anything that I have a preference for generally. So the results are usually seen as unreliable. If in a test you are being tested by, say, your mum, then she may be inclined to give you a better score on that test. So that would be because she has bias. So note I'm saying has bias because the word bias is the noun and it shouldn't be confused with the word biased. I hope you can hear the difference there. Bias and biased. It sounds like I've put a T on the end there. So um, written biased. But it is supposed to be that ED, which you can see here, biased, which refers to the adjective. This is describes the result. So again, that pronunciation, you can really, you've really, really got to strain to hear the difference between bias and biased um, because of that S sound. Um, so to be biased is to have the quality of being bias okay so your mum may give you a different score than what you deserve on test because she has bias and the reason that she has bias is because she is biased i hope that you can hear the difference between those and um, maybe it'd be useful for me to write it out in a sentence so that you can see the difference in front of you. So I have bias towards my friends. So any decisions I make regarding them will be biased. So the results, the adjective will be biased and the noun bias, I have bias or there is bias. Um, so I hope that that makes some sense for you. Again, it is a really tricky one, so don't get too caught up in it. Um, just try to differentiate between the noun and the adjective, and that should really help, excuse me, really help with your pronunciation. Um, just try to emphasize that ed on the end biased and bias okay again really tricky because it is all one syllable um regardless of the ed on the end so i understand if you find that one a little bit difficult and um, thank you abdus for commenting hi laura hi abdus <laughs> we'll move on to the next word now and um, but as I'm going along, if there's any questions that you have, please just leave them in the comment box and um, I will get to them. Additionally, if you have any words that you're struggling with today that aren't B or C words necessarily, please, please feel free to just leave them in um, the comments box and I will get to them. Please be assured everybody's words will be um, tackled for them. OK, in the meantime, we'll move on to the next word. Um, if you need to go back <clears throat> and have me repronounce it <clears throat> in real time, you can just leave a comment now. But if this is if you're watching this back later on, um, it's going to be com it's going to be posted on the Facebook page and um, the IELTS helpline Facebook page, so you can rewind and hear me say it again and again if the repetition is going to help you, which I'm sure it will. Um, okay, our next word is biography. 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 Again, a tricky one because biography looks like it's going to be, even if you have wrapped your head around that pH for the graphy part of the word, um, bio, in other words, like biology or biohazard you know the bio part of the word is pronounced in quite different ways and that that can be quite difficult as you're trying to pronounce several different words with that bio and um, prefix in it 
So bio typically refers to um, a person or, um, I don't know, I suppose in the science sense, it's referring to the body, but still generally means an individual. And then the second part of the word graphy tends to refer to writing or um, rec records. So you can see how the word biography comes to mean the story of somebody's life, but it's not one that's written about um, yourself. So one that's written about yourself is an auto biography. Autobiography, which the only difference of that word is obviously the auto at the start. Auto means um, yourself. So autobiography is one that you write about yourself, but just biography is written about somebody else. So you might have biographies of famous people. Um, or you might have biographies about somebody that you know. Um, typically, they're written in a novel, but um, obviously it can be in any sort of way. They can be biographical films, for example. Um, I've had a comment below just asking me to clarify groofy or graphy. It should be graphy. So like you've written phonetically there, the graphy part should be almost like Graphy, graphy, biography. So just be careful that you're not saying biography, because again, that bio can be easily confused between different words. In some, it's biog, like in this case, biography, biography. So you can hear the difference there. It should be biography not biography. Okay, so the stress on that word, the emphasis, biography, is going to be on the LG there. Biography. So the story of somebody's life, not written about yourself, biography. I think if everybody's fine with that one, we'll move on to our next word, which is bizarre. Bizarre, which I think um, coming to it, maybe on first looking at this word, it really doesn't look like your typical English word. You tend to be able to recognise the patterns of certain French words, German words, um, and English words, and this one really does not look like it's an English word. Um, bizarre, bizarre. It's an adjective, which means strange, unusual. Um, it's typically used to describe something in a negative way. So you might say that a person is bizarre, in which case you'd be saying something bad about them. Um, that person might have showing some behaviour that you think is strange. It doesn't really refer to appearance, it does generally refer to um, somebody's mannerisms or their act, the way that they act. Um, or you could also have a bizarre anything, really bizarre place, bizarre set of circumstances. Um, you can have anything that's bizarre, anything that's strange or unusual. But again, just be aware that is being used in a negative way. Um, yeah, so somebody commenting below has said it sounds almost as if that R is not being pronounced. So it wouldn't be bizarre like that with the R, R, E being emphasised. It's almost as if you've got that double A or even a H, bizarre. So I suppose because of that A, R, R, E, 
suffix there. Oops. And the that a r r e suffix again because it's not English. It does tend to catch you out because it doesn't look like um the word would be pronounced as it is spelt. Um, bizarre. So of the two syllables, the one that is stressed is that czar. So you might find it helpful to envision the way that it would be um, pronounced phonetically, which would be um, with the A-H, or if you find it more helpful, A-A, czar, czar, czar. Something that's strange or unusual, bizarre. Okay, so everybody, I think, is okay with that one now. So we'll move on to the next one. So this one is the verb to boast. Boast. So again, that tricky to vowel combination OA. To boast about something is to brag, but it's most conventionally used when it's regarding yourself. So um, you would boast about your achievements. You might boast about how much money you have, how good looking you are, anything that's positive, but also just anything that you possess. So you could boast about your children. You could boast about your house. Um, yeah, any anything that you possess, a quality about yourself, possession, boast. Um, so what you might find tricky about this word is going to be, again, that OA in the comment box. So if we look at the word bore, for example, bore that you know hairy pig whatever it is and um, you'd refer to it as a bore noun and um, the word bore has that same oa bore but it's pronounced quite differently to boast bore boast so that oa combination um because of the different variations that it have it has it can make words that have the oa really quite tricky so boast and um, other variations are going to be boastful boasted obviously boastful is um the adjective the quality of boasting a lot it's not generally received as quite a good thing and um, be boastful people would generally assume that you're quite full of yourself um, quite full of your own self-importance. Um, obviously, people get sick of other people boasting a lot. Um, so the difference there, bore and boast. Boast. So if you're going to be doing the phonetic pronunciation, maybe just try to think of it as bow. B-O. H maybe, bow, and then ST, boast, boast. And it is really that um, most simple form of pronouncing an O. So people have O, O, U, so boast. And of course, the other one is O. Okay. So brag about oneself to boast. Okay, our next word is, oh hang on sorry I've just got a comment below, um, so somebody has commented, let me see if I can put it up, is bizarre somewhat similar to weird in meaning? Yes, um, weird and bizarre are basically interchangeable, so um, you'd find something bizarre as much as you'd find something weird. Although um, I would say that bizarre is maybe stronger in meaning. 
um, if you call somebody bizarre, quite an insult. Whereas weird, I think, is taken a little bit more in a colloquial and informal sense. So, um, yeah, just be cautious if you're going to call somebody bizarre that, yes, you do mean weird, but it does have, you know, associations of something that's a little bit more, um, I don't know, maybe mean. <laughs> so bizarre, bizarre. Okay. I'll move back to the um, slide now. Thank you for your question. Um, if anybody else has got anything that they're wondering, any questions at all, please just leave them in the comment because the comment box because I will get to them. Okay. I'll move back to the slide now. Oh, sorry. Just before I went, we did have one more. So um, we've got this one. Thank you again for leaving the comment there. Um, so a trickier word again, um, the word is eerie, eerie, eerie. So again, it has got the, the meaning weird or peculiar. Um, and just Fatima's entering the chat. Hi, Fatima. I'm good, thank you. I hope you're well. Um, eerie is one that has a supernatural quality to it so um you would tend to refer to something that's eerie not just as something that's weird but also something that um is perhaps scary eerie tends to be something that you would be frightened of or at least unsettled by um eerie yeah so it's got a bit of a different association than maybe weird or bizarre has you wouldn't tend to be afraid of something that was weird or bizarre whereas eerie definitely has that sort of spooky quality about it um yeah i hope that answered your question eerie it is similar in meaning but it does have a slightly different association okay hope that answered your question if anybody else has got any others Please just leave them in the comment box. You know, I'll always get to them. If you've been here before, you know that we'll definitely, definitely get to them. OK. OK, so our next word is bomb. Bomb. And it refers to both a noun and a verb. So the noun bomb is to refer to an explosive device. Specifically, bombs are used, obviously, to attack people, to harm people. So you wouldn't refer to something like a firework as a bomb because it has, of course, got, um, you know, connotations that you're intending to hurt somebody with a bomb. And then the verb bomb is, again, pronounced just the same. To bomb something is to attack it with a bomb <laughs> so to attack with an explosive device so bomb okay hopefully everybody's got their head around that one the b at the end is silent so just the same as all the words with that silent b so you might have tomb climb um no. All of those words have that B at the end as silent, bomb, tomb, climb, numb. Okay, so I think we've wrapped our head around that one, both the verb and the noun. Okay, the next one is the reason why I put that bomb one up first. It's because not only for the tricky silent B, but also it's good to demonstrate that sometimes the noun and the verb can be pronounced really differently even though they're spelled the same so that's obviously not the case for bomb because in bomb the verb and the noun are both pronounced exactly the same somebody else has also added um home home 
So yeah, that's quite right. A really good example of that silent B. And um, again, also an example of a noun and um, a verb where um, the word is spelt and pronounced the same. So the same as bomb. You also have comb, as in to comb your hair, but also the bristles um, that you would use to comb your hair is called a comb. Okay. So comb and comb, the verb and the noun, are going to be the same. However, for the one that we're looking at now, um, the verb and the noun are going to be pronounced differently. So the first, we'll first talk about the, the noun, which is either in two, two most common senses, um, a bow, which is a type of knot, usually of ribbon. So you would tie a bow for your shoelaces and tie a bow in your hair. And then you have a bow, which is a weapon, which is used for shooting arrows. So you can see from the picture I've popped in there um, that the, the bow is that sort of um, string part of the weapon. Um, so the most common nouns are going to be bow for the knot and bow for the weapon but you can also have the verb which is bow 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 so try to hear the difference between the bow and bow to bow, the verb, is to greet somebody or thank somebody by bending at the waist. So um, in a lot of cultures, I believe that um, bowing is typically to greet somebody um, or to thank somebody. Um, as you can see in the picture, it's usually um, quite a formal um, and respectful way of greeting or thanking somebody to Bow. However, in a really, really confusing sense, um, you can also have another way of pronouncing the verb, which is um, to bow, to bow, which is pronounced just the same as the bow, an arrow, and the knot, which is a bow. Um, so, really confusingly, you can also have bow which is um, when something dips in the middle. So um, you might have a bow and of wood, like something that is bowed would be something that is dipped in the middle. So let me try and find a picture um, to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And um, it's quite a difficult thing to envision, I suppose. Um, let's see. So here, Okay, I'm just going to copy it and I'll put it on the PowerPoint so that everybody can see here. So you can see in this picture there, um, the first one, let's just crop that down. We don't need the other ones. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so to bow is usually referred to a material which should not bend but has done usually as the result of getting wet or whatever else has, has happened to that piece of material, which has caused it to bend in a way that it's not supposed to. So you can see the relationship between these two. You can see that that's a bow because it's a bowed piece of wood and to bow is to um, bend, of course. Um, you can also see the relationship between these because these people are bending and this material is bending. But please be aware that this picture is referring to bow. Bow. So we've got the first one, which is um, a knot tied in your hair. That's a bow. A weapon that is used for shooting arrows is a bow. So commonly a bow and arrow. And this one will be 
to bow, bow, which is to bend at the waist, to show respect when greeting somebody or thanking somebody, to bow. And the last verb that we have is also to bow, which is um, the material has bowed as the verb, or you could say um, the adjective, um, this clank of wood is bow, as bowed. Okay, so again, you've got the relationship bending there, bending at the waist, bending piece of material. Hope everybody's got the hang of that one, but if, if you're struggling with that one, please don't worry about it because, um, you know, that last verb, the material bowing is really quite an uncommon usage. But I just wanted to make everybody aware of that because it can be so confusing when a noun and a verb um, aren't pronounced how you would expect them to be. I understand that that can be really quite tricky. So as we've had in the comments, we've had comb, tomb, climb, the noun and the verb can obviously not for tomb, but the noun and the verb can be pronounced the same or in the case of bow and bow, it can be pronounced differently. So if you want to just practice with a couple of sentences to make sure that you've got your head around that one, that will probably be useful. If you want me to send some to you, then obviously feel free to drop the page a message and um, we can get you some practice sentences to open. Okay. So our next word is brutal, brutal, brutal. It's an adjective which is referring to something being excessively violent. So it usually, um, you could, um, yeah, you can also use it as an adverb, um, which would be, um, you know, to hit somebody brutally or, you know, whatever sort of violent action. And um, you could even refer to it um, a non-physical action. So you might have, um, you might argue against somebody's point brutally, which would be to show no mercy in an argument. Um, but like I say, conventionally, it does refer to a physical verb. So you know, kicking, hitting, whatever it is. So don't be tempted in by that U sound as brutal. It should be brutal, like rhyming with blue. Through and blue, brutal. Excessively violent. Just referring back to the bow question here. Um, we've had a comment, bow, low, row, and wow, I think that's supposed to say. Um, if you're going for wow, then it should be spelled like this, wow, or wow. Wow here means sadness, and wow there means, is like an, an expression of surprise. Okay, so you're quite right. Bow, low, row, and wow are the same. Um, and then obviously for bow, that's the, those aren't going to rhyme. Then it will be bow, pow. Bow, cow. Not going to be the same as low. Ow, cow, sow. Yeah, hope you get the hang of that. Um, and that's been helpful for you. Thank you for putting that comment. That's really useful and a good example of the way that thinking about rhyming words can help with your pronunciation. Because if you can make those associations early on, it's really going to help you later down the line when you've got more complicated words or compound words. Um, I've also had the question, fuel, how to pronounce fuel, fuel, a tricky combination of the vowels there, fuel, 
So if we just insert a slide, and I'll do your, oops, um, which is obviously the gas or um, food, whichever larger substance, um, which is broken down to give energy. Um, oops, oh, I'm terrible at typing whilst I'm looking at the screen. Okay, so fuel. Try to imagine um, the phonetic spelling few L. So the first part of that should be pronounced like the word few L. Fuel. We're not going to emphasize that E. So fuel. You might even find it in, um, helpful to just imagine fuel like that. Fuel. Okay, so hopefully that's been helpful. Fuel, fuel. I'll leave that on for you and we can always flip back to it. Um, but again, this presentation, the whole lesson is going to be um, posted on Facebook later. So um, if you need to go back to it at any point, that's absolutely no problem. And um, thank you, Fatima, for the question. Anybody else who's got any, please just leave them in the comment box and we will get to them. OK. The next word that we've got is another one of the noun and the verb, which are going to be pronounced the same, even though um, we did have bow and bow. Um, here's another one where it is going to be pronounced the same, both the noun and the verb. So. We'll start with the noun, burden, burden, which is a heavy load. It can be both physical and mental. So it doesn't have to be literally a material item that's heavy. It can also be figuratively um, a load that you have to bear spiritually, mentally, emotionally. So. In the picture, you can see he's carrying something heavy, and um, that would be a burden. But also, the picture could be trying to show the metaphor for having something painful or difficult on your mind, which would be to have the mental burden. Things like bad news or something coming up that you're nervous for, whatever it is. Okay, burden. And then um, the verb to burden, usually you would burden somebody else um, with, again, something heavy. So you might burden them with a heavy item, a heavy suitcase, whatever it is. Um, but also, again, it can be mental. So you could say that you um, didn't want to tell somebody some bad news, but you didn't want to burden them. The verb burden, again, is referring to a burden, which is something heavy when you're using the noun form of that word. So burden. And if we're going to, again, write it in the phonetic way, you might think of it as in bear, bear. Burden. Whichever, obviously, spelling you find easier. I think it's probably going to be the second one, isn't it? There, then. So try to resist burden or burden. I don't know how you'd even really say that wrong, but burden, it should be burden, might even go from there. Burden. Okay, so hopefully you're comfortable with that one and we'll move on to the next one. I think the next one is our last B word today before we move on to C words. Yeah, we've got two more. Okay, so our next one we actually did touch on last week, but I felt like we skipped over it maybe a little bit too quickly for how difficult of a word it is. So this word is bureaucracy. 
bureaucracy. This one's just the noun, bureaucracy, which is a system of government. Um, bureaucracy. So I'm just going to pop on the screen for this part because I think it's one of those where it can be quite useful to see the way your the the shape of your mouth makes when you're pronouncing this word. So hang on, let me just try and find the button. Okay, so um, can I pop up side by side? Is that big enough? Yeah. Okay, so bureaucracy. So we'll break the word down. That can be quite helpful sometimes. Let's see. Your. So we've got that. Um, almost a Y. Your. Bureaucracy. Of course, don't try and um, write it like this. This is just the phonetic, the just the phonetic spelling. Um, the correct spelling is at the top of um, the PowerPoint bureaucracy. But I've put in that Y to try to emphasise the shape that your mouth is going to make when you're pronouncing this word. Bure, bure. So your tongue is going to the top of your mouth with that um, Y sound. Um, it's not going to be bore like we touched on before. Bore, bore. Not going to be bureaucracy, it's bureaucracy. Okay, so um not sure how well that's sitting with everybody. If you're finding that one particularly difficult, please just leave me a message. Um because Nabi has um I hope I'm pronouncing that right, please correct me if I'm not. Um has been having a go with the phonetic spelling, it's quite a difficult one to. Um, do the phonetic spelling, particularly if you're not 100% comfortable with the letter C and the different ways that that is pronounced. But um, I think you're quite right. It's going to be bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Let's see it maybe a bit bigger and be smaller. <laughs> bureaucracy. Okay. So um, again, I'd just like to remind everybody that we will be having um, somebody on screen to do some pronunciations for us. I think I'll do that in a couple of minutes. So if you're interested in appearing on screen to do some pronunciations for us, I've got some B's and some C's um, for us to go through. And I think we'll also go through the words that I've already done as well, because we've had some pretty tricky ones today. And I'd like to see whether this teaching method has really been useful for people or if I've misjudged. Um, so um, I'll start that in a couple of minutes after we've done the last B word. Um, so in the meantime, if you can, if you're interested in appearing on screen, just leave a comment in the box um, saying that you'll be willing to and I can send you an invite. If you do want to be on, then please make sure that your camera's on. You give Facebook permission to access your camera settings and um, because if not, you won't be able to appear online. OK, so I'll just pop off the screen again. Um, and our last um, word for the B section is going to be burst, burst, burst. Again, there's going to be the verb and the noun for this word, but it's one of those ones again where, regardless of whether it's, excuse me, the verb or the noun, excuse me, <laughs> yawning, um, it is going to be pronounced the same. So, first, the verb is going to be to break open in a sudden way. So, um, for example, maybe a pipe would burst. OK, or there is um, most commonly, I mean, you can also use it for an adjective. So you could say that that pipe is burst. But that aside, I'll just take bureaucracy off the screen as well. Sorry. Um, or there's also burst, which is the noun, which is um, 
a, like a period, um, a short period of intense effort or a brief and powerful outbreak. So you might say, um, I have got a burst of energy, a burst of energy, which would be to have a brief, powerful outbreak of energy. Or there's a short period of intense effort. So you might say, I'm going to be running in short 10 minute bursts. OK, so again, the verb and the noun are going to be pronounced the same burst and burst. To burst is to break open in a certain way. And the noun burst is going to be a brief and powerful outbreak, for example, of energy or a short period of intense effort, which is like running in 10 minute bursts. OK, I hope everybody is comfortable with that one. Burst. It's going to be phonetically spelt. Probably you'd go for an E. Burst. Like that. Burst. Burst. So try not to be tempted in by that U to say burst. Burst. It should be burst. OK. So hopefully everybody with that one. And I think I'll try and get somebody on screen now, if that's OK. And we'll take it back to the start of the B words. And we can go through those. And then I've got a couple of um, test examples. So if anybody is really keen to come on, please just pop the message up. I don't know if Gusnavi, you might you um you were on last week whether you'd like to have another go. I think you did put sure on the screen, so maybe it was in reference to that. But um I don't want to force anybody to come on. So if you're not comfortable with it or you don't fancy it today, that's that's absolutely fine. Um you don't have to, nobody has to. Um Okay, so I'll just give a minute. Leave a comment if you are interested. And um, we'll get that sorted out. Okay. So I think I can see, um, as Nabi, you want to. Um, so we'll invite you on the screen then. Um, let's see if we can get this to work, shall we? Um, would you be able to send a request? Maybe I think that was the way that we got in last time. Um, I'm not sure how we do it. Um, Hmm. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Maybe I can. Yeah. We can have we can have more people than just one on. Um, I've posted the link there to be able to accept the invite. And um, hopefully that'll make it a little bit easier for you if you are trying to get in. Um, just click that link. And you should be able to get on. Sorry, everybody who's waiting for me to pronounce more words. Um, I'm trying to get Gaznabi on and then maybe he'll have a go for us as well at some of your more difficult words. Um, so I've just popped the link there. It is in the comments if you're interested in joining. Oh, I think he's in. I think we've got him. More difficult words. Hello, Laura. Hello, nice to see you again. Thank you. It is, is it? It's a pleasure yeah. to have you back. Um, yeah. So, are you comfortable with going through the B way that we've been doing so far? Yeah. Yes. Yeah? Okay, great. So, okay. let's get on with it then. Um, our first yeah. word. Ah, okay, I will start. Belly. Ballet. Okay, so ballet. for anybody that's new, we did ballet earlier on. 
We're just going to be going through the words that we've already covered today first. Okay. Next Ballot. Question. Ballot. Perfect. Ballot. Yeah. Okay. Bargain. Beneficial. Perfect. Yeah. Beneficiary. Correct. Okay. Bias. Bias. Biography. Biography. Biography, okay. So we do have the stress of that word. Biography. Biog. Bio biography. Okay. Okay. Bizarre. Bizarre. Perfect. Ah. Okay. Boast. Boast. Bomb. Bomb. Perfect. Okay. Bow. Okay, so he said bow for the top two um, nouns. A bow as in the knot and a bow as in uh, the weapon. And then for the verb. Okay. Bow. Bow. Perfect. So bow okay. and bow. Anybody that's confused with this. Okay. Fuel. Fuel. Yeah. Brutal. Brutal. Yeah. Burden. 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 Okay. Burden. Ah. Bureaucracy. Bureaucracy. Perfect. Really yeah. good pronunciation. Good, yeah, thank you. Yeah. Burst. Burst. Perfect. Such yeah. good pronunciation. So we've had some um, tricky ones left in the comments for us. Would you be okay with um, trying out some of those? Okay. Okay, so our first one. Can you see that? Buffet. Yeah. Buffet. 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 So, it is a tricky one that you've chosen there. Thank you for putting oh, yeah. that comment in the box for us. Um, a buffet, for anybody who's wondering, is a, a manner of serving food, so leaving out food for somebody to come and choose whatever they'd like. A buffet. Um, it comes from the French word, so very much like ballet that we had our first word. Yeah. That NT isn't pronounced. So um, it is as nappy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I'm listening. Yeah, and yeah. um, oh. so he was quite right. It's buffet, mm -hmm. buffet, buffet, okay. buffet, uh, buffet, or so buffet, 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 like okay. okay, it would be um phonetically spelled like I'll pop okay. it in the comments so I can put it on the screen, buffet. Buffet, okay, good to go. Okay. I got it. Okay, thank you. Ballet, okay. Yeah. Yes, okay. correct, yeah. Buffet, yeah. Okay, buffet. Okay, lovely. So then we've got... Uh, it is bread. Uh, first one is... Uh, Bread or something like that. Uh, the second one is bread, and the last one is bread. But yeah, first one, so I got confused. Right? So they can be again really quite um, difficult ones. Those because they, they're so yeah. similarly spelled. And um, the first yeah. one is going to be bread. 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 Okay. Get to so that that G. Um, is not you know emphasized a lot in the word it's breath okay the next one because it's got breath. e on the end is going to be breathe 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 yeah the verb to breathe mm. and the last one is going to be breath breath, breath. okay so anybody listening just try to hear the difference between breath 
and breath. You haven't got that that sort um I don't know, maybe a broken sound there between breath and breath. So tricky ones, breath is the um wideness of something. To breathe obviously is to inhale and exhale, and breath is the noun and um, you know the oxygen that you've just exhaled okay so mm. breath breathe and breath thank you for popping that one in the, in the comments for us next one biology biology perfect yeah so we tackled this one a little bit earlier on i think not this exact word but we did do where is it um, biography so biography. Um, yeah exactly so um we discussed how this one might be a bit more difficult because bio can be pronounced differently for different words so we had biohazard which is yeah, biohazard. Than biography yeah yeah okay so i hope that um your questions have been answered there if you've got any other ones for him to try please just pop them in the comments as you can probably tell he's pretty expert at um pronunciation but if you don't have as good pronunciation as him please don't worry because um we're getting to them and it'll continue to improve so long as you're watching um are you happy to just do a couple yeah. of tech things at the end? yeah sure yeah Okay. Okay. And you said that I'm expert. You said that. Yeah, I think that you really, really got impressed. Oh my god. Pronunciation. <laughs> um, have you taken a mock test before? Uh, yeah. Sorry. Have you ever taken a mock I E L T S? No, 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 no. You haven't taken. Didn't. Well, I really think when 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 the page starts to offer them, you should you should really give it a go because you've got advanced pronunciation. Okay. Really, it's it's so impressive, and um, you should be really pleased with it. Um, yeah. Okay. I will do it. Practicing for. Ah, uh, sorry. If, if it's okay some, me to ask. Some net, some net issues come, so problem. So. Some uh, uh, we got some delay on your uh, speech. All right, okay, okay. So, is it going to be for a job? Is it going to be for where you live? Or, uh, I, I live in Bangladesh, in yeah, Dhaka city. Okay, we'll see. Well, you're doing really well <laughs> anyway. Thank you again okay. for appearing with me. Today. Okay, okay, so let's get on with the test words. Um, if you could just okay. read. Yeah. Okay. Atrocity. Alacrity. I think it is a bit confused. Okay, the next one is attorney. Mm -hmm. Auction. Briefly, cocktail, a cocktail, and the next one is cognitive, closure, conquer, compute, council, condense, concede. Deployment, demo. Perfect, absolutely perfect. Oh Every God. single okay. one, right? Okay. Okay, so the alacrity is right. Alacrity is right. Yeah. Alacrity. Okay, okay, good. Thank you. So sweet perfect. over you. So he okay. did atrocity, alacrity, mm -hmm. attorney, mm -hmm. auction, briefly. Yeah. Cocktail, cognitive, yeah. closure, conquer, compute, conceal, 
condense, concede, deployment, and demon. So I thought that those were going to be a lot more challenging than apparently they were, because um, you got every single yeah. one of them right. Really impressive. Well done. Um, thanks for coming on screen to do those for us. Um, okay. Would you be happy to just do a couple more before you go? Sure, sure. Please bring it on. If bring there it is on. a challenging bird. Yeah. <laughs> so Fatima's left foot. Okay. Brute. Okay, so the first okay. one, brooch, is a verb, yeah. which is to approach the subject. So you would brooch um, asking for um, more money. You would brooch asking for a raise. You would brooch asking for anything, okay. basically. Um, it okay. means to tentatively or cautiously ask somebody about something and the second one is the noun okay. Okay. it's like a pin that you would put on clothing and um, that okay. one's a bit trickier because it it's a lot more specific to people so some people might say brooch and some people might say brooch so if you're going for the Bro last yeah, yeah, yeah. pronunciation both of them are going to be brooch Whereas you'd probably still be understood if you did pronounce it brooch. Okay, but just anybody yeah. who's listening, please don't get confused between the noun and the verb because if you do pronounce them the same, fine, but you can't pronounce the, the verb to brooch, to brooch, to brooch as brooch. You don't brooch somebody, it's brooch. Okay? Okay, um, okay. If anybody else has got any other ones that they could leave for us in the comments below. If you're happy, we'll do another um, pronunciation little session at the end. Um, and I can invite you back on screen again then, if you're happy to do that. Sure, sure. Yeah, okay, so we'll do that about um, perhaps 20 to 1-ish, because um, the lesson will be finishing at 1. Um, just one more before you go then. Um, Bohemian. Bohemian. Yeah. Bohemian. So, yeah. quite right. Bo, and then he. Bohemian. Bohemian, yeah. So, oh, quite I got it. Let me, let me pronounce it, Laura. Go ahead. Bohemian. Bohemian. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, Bohemian. Um, yeah. That's an adjective for anybody who's worrying about okay. knowing the meaning. Um, Bohemian is an aesthetic style, um, yeah. which okay. is typically associated with the Bahamas and mm. um, Bohemian. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, okay. thank you. So Appearing on screen, um, and we'll bring you back on later on in about one. Okay. okay, okay, thank you. Well, bye for now, then, and we'll do some C words in the meantime. Thank you. Okay, thanks very much. Okay, so that was great. Again, if anybody else would like to appear on screen, that's fine. Um, I'd like to see people with maybe some more mixed ability. Because he's just too, he's just so good at it, so um, it's really just uh, unfair on the rest of us, isn't it? Um, that he's getting them right every single time. Um, so thank you again, Gasnavi, for that. That was really good to appear on screen. Thank you. So in the meantime, we'll start off with um, one of the words that I've got in the comments there, which is boulevard. Boulevard. Really put some tricky ones in the in the comments today. Um, boulevard is a road or a street. Boulevard, and um, it's a tricky one because again it comes from the French, so it's a bit of an atypical um, English pronunciation. Boulevard. 
um, try not to be phased with all the different um, vowels all in one word. It can be a little bit overwhelming, I think, boulevard. Um, try to envision the um, phonetic pronunciation, which I'll just type in the comments and I'll pop it on the screen for you. Boo. Okay. okay. So there we go. Boulevard. In the song, um, in the song they sing it differently. Yeah, um, they um, it, that's the American. So I believe they say it. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing for you, but um, the Boulevard of Broken Dreams. So they have the emphasis on the bard. I think mostly for the purposes of the song and keeping it into you know the beat or whatever it is i'm not very musical um along the boulevard like that <laughs> um yeah so boulevard so long as you're not mixing up the the ooh lay part of the word i, I think you're fine to put the the emphasis on either the the first part of the word the boo or the bard okay so Sorry for the embarrassing singing, everybody. <laughs> Boulevard. For anybody who's um, wondering what song we're talking about, um, I'll pop the link in the description for you. Maybe you'll you'll find that a little bit helpful. Let me just. Oh gosh, sorry, that was not fair. It was really loud. I'll pop that in the in the comments box for you. And you can have a listen once the lesson's over or or whilst the lesson's going on over me <laughs> if it's a little bit more interesting it's a really old song by green day um and the title is boulevard of broken dreams okay so like that okay so that was the word boulevard um yep yeah, correct boulevard 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 and we've also had Fatima and um, blue and blue. And um, so they should be the same. They should rhyme. Um, blue is going to be the with the EW is going to be the past tense of blow. So just be aware that blue, the color is the adjective with the UE and the EW is going to be the verb, the past tense of blow. OK. So blue and blue, where the EW is going to be the past tense of blue. Okay. Hopefully that's been helpful for you. If you've got any questions, don't forget you can just leave them in the comment box below. That's no problem. Um, and we'll definitely, definitely get to them for you. Um, okay, if there's no more questions. For now, we'll move on to our C words, but there'll be ample opportunity at the end to leave more questions if you'd like Ghaznabi to have a go at them. Or in the meantime, if you want me to just pronounce them as we're going, I have no issue with that. OK, they are the same. Yeah, Fatima, yeah. Blue and blue. Blue and blue. Okay. Yeah, they pronounce the same. Blue and blue. Okay, so we'll move on to some C words now. This is not all the C words that I wanted to cover today, but I don't know if we'll have the time to do them all. So um, we might not get around to all the C words on the list, but hopefully we'll have a good go at it. Okay. So provided everybody's ready, we'll move on to those now. Our first word today is cabinet. Cabinet. And I put this one in, even though it might seem simple to some of you, if you've heard it before or you've um, seen it written, sorry, and you are comfortable with that pronunciation. Cabinet. Um, I've put in because we did have ballet and ballot 
earlier. So you might be tempted when you see the word ballet, which I'll just pop on screen for anybody that didn't, that wasn't tuned in then. Did ballet, oops, ballet earlier, which ballet um, we discussed as having come from the French. So the T at the end of the word is not pronounced in ballet, whereas cabinet again is going to come from the French and it does look like that French spelling um not typically English but it does pronounce the T on the end so like ballot which we also had earlier ballot you can see the difference there between ballet and ballot um where the T is pronounced in the latter one but not in the in the former one it's the same with cabinet so it's not cabinet the noun is cabinet which is a cupboard that you typically display items in like in the picture cabinet cabinet okay so the next one we've got is calculation calculation which is a mathematical system which will determine the final value. So it comes from, of course, excuse me, I don't know why I've wanted so much today. I mustn't have slept well last night. Um comes from the verb to calculate. And the noun that you would reach from the verb calculation, from the verb to calculate, is a calculation. Okay? Hopefully you can see the relationship between those words there, calculation. Okay. Next one we have is canal. Canal, which is the noun, a waterway for boats to pass through. Canal. Um, just pop it back to cabinet a second. Because um, we've had a great comment along the bottom. Cabinet is used to refer to a group of officials as well. You're quite right. I should have added that in on the PowerPoint, really, because it is quite a common usage. Um, so, yeah, group of officials. Yeah, you're quite right. It is also a group of officials. So you might say that um, you're going to be appearing in court and... The decision will be reached by the cabinet, which is, like you say, a group of officials. So sorry that I've missed that one off the PowerPoint. You're 100% right. Um, thank you so much for leaving that comment. Cabinet is also used to refer to a group of officials. Spot on. Okay. So we'll go back to canal. Um, Canal, again, is the waterway for boats to pass through. Um, maybe not everybody has this where they live, so um, you might not be 100% familiar with them and maybe haven't seen this word written before, which is why I decided to put it in. Um, so a canal, um, you must be careful when you're pronouncing it that you're not going for canal or um, canal, anything like that. Um, it should be can al, can al. So it's maybe a more simple pronunciation than maybe you would have first thought. Can and al, like that. Can al. So try not to split it like this because you may be pronounced, you may be tempted then for canal. Canal would probably have cane like this in it. So if you just try to envision the way that that would be split up phonetically, you may, might find that a little bit more helpful when it comes to pronouncing canal. Canal. Okay, move on to the next one, which is capability. Capability. So that is somebody's ability or capacity for ability. So you might have... Um, Let's see, so you might have your capacity to, oh, capacity 
for um, running capacity um, for artwork capacity to play music it can be any verb um, a skill set or ability um, yeah so hopefully you can get your head around that one you can also be capable which is pronounced slightly differently so we have capable Um, which is confusing because next to each other they look like they're going to be pronounced the same because one word is obviously a derivative from the other but we're going to have the um, first one capability and then capable the same as we're going to have capacity so to be capable is to be able with something to have that ability to be to have capability is to have that ability or the capacity for it and again capacity is to um have um to have space i suppose or room or again ability um, so sorry that there's so much capacity, ability, capability, capable. Um, that makes it a lot more confusing, I understand. But um, they're quite difficult words to um, summarise, especially if you're trying to make it a bit more simple for people who maybe haven't heard it before. Um, I've had, again, the suggestion just to bring it on and um, bring on another person. Um, we will definitely get to adding more people on if people are comfortable with coming on. I don't want to force anybody, but um, it would be great to give somebody else a go and to see how they pronounce things like like you said in the comment. Um, it's a lot easier if I can have somebody on that we can um, correct because a lot of people, because of their native accent, are making the same mistakes. So you might find it quicker to learn and a little bit easier as well if I'm correcting somebody that's um, saying it wrong it's not going to be in a mean way I don't um I'll never make anybody feel bad for not having pronounced that correctly um so please if you are willing to come on and you have um Facebook with the, the permission to access your camera please, please leave a comment and we'll we'll bring you on. Please don't feel shy. Um, we've only got 24 viewers at the moment anyway, so there's there's not a huge amount of people watching. You don't need to worry about that. Um, I've also had the comment, canal is somewhat similar to banal. Yep, the two should rhyme. Um, it's a bit of a regional accent one for banal because some people pronounce it banal which canal certainly can't be pronounced canal mm, i suppose by somebody that was really posh it could um so yeah canal and banal yeah somewhat similar yeah not in meaning but of course they ran okay so yeah you did you did add in pronunciation please let me try of course would you like to come on now if you're ready now um just leave another comment saying that you're ready and I'll invite you into the chat, okay? Um, just leave a comment down below and we'll have you do some um, some C words for us. You ready? Um, let's see, can I copy? Yeah. So I'll just pop that back into the chat um, and you can just copy that link and you can invite yourself into this chat. We don't just have to have one person as well. We can have up to six people, including myself. So if you're interested in it, um, if, if you'd like to come on separately, um, that's fine as well. But if you'd like to be on at the same time, I have no issue with that. So um, should we do one and then the other? Um, and then we'll see how we get on with that. Okay, so if you're ready, um, please just copy and paste this link 
and you should be able to invite yourself in. Um, just wait for you to get the hang of that and um, pop it in the. You just all you need is this link that's along the bottom, um, and you should be able to enter the chat, and then I can just click to add you in. Um, let's see. All you have to do is just invite yourself using that link that I've put in the comments. Um, okay, so yeah, you should should have no issue if you just use that link below. Sorry for anybody who's waiting for their words to be pronounced. We're just trying to get somebody else in the chat at the moment. Um, but we'll be back in a minute. Um, all you need to do is just copy and paste that link. And Gaznabi, if you're watching, um, then if you could give us a hand, that would be great. Thank you, Renna. Are you in? Yeah. Yeah, would you be able to help yeah. 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 enlighten us about sure. how you actually get into the live stream? Yeah. Nice to be with you. Okay, Laura. So can I start in this? So if you could if you could just tell us how you managed to get on in the first place, then we can give yeah. somebody else a little go and I'll come back at the end. Sure. No problem, you can carry on with me if you want to. We um we've got somebody who'd um who'd like to have a go. Um if you could just walk us through how we can get them on the live stream, that would be really helpful. Yeah, yeah. Actually one to one chat is very helpful for improving the Pronunciation or whatever, whatever we can call it. I think we've got one other large stream that would be really helpful. Um, Bring me on. Yeah. Hi. Okay, here we got one person here. Mahesh. Actually, one to one chat is very helpful for improving the pronunciation or whatever we can call it. Okay, so we're just waiting for one more person now, I think. Dreams, that would be really helpful. Um, Bring me on. Yeah. And um, so we'll just have a go um, at a couple whilst you just getting that, getting to grips with that, um, with the the link that I've put in the comments. Um, if you continue to struggle, we'll take another break. But I'm just conscious that we're on a time limit, so um, just copy and paste that link, and you'll be able to get in. Hi, um, to our little newcomer. Um, nice to see you. Um, okay, so if you're ready, you can unmute and we'll do some pronunciation. Um, thanks for joining us. Um, so our next word we have, if you'd like to have a go at it, Can you hear okay? Maybe I need my um, volume up a little bit more. I can't quite hear you. No, I can't hear you. Um, is Can anybody else hear okay? Or is it just me? Hmm. Maybe there's something wrong with the technology. Um, we're just trying to pronounce this this word that's on the screen now. Oh, Aznabi's gone. Can you see that at all? Um, oh, let's see. 
Uh, you can't hear either, Fatima. Thank you for letting me know. Um, let's just bring you both on, um, provided that you're ready. Hi, nice to see Hi. you. Thank you for joining us. Hi, um, Hi. Mahesh, I'm not sure we can hear you. Um, maybe you can do my microphone closer to your mouth, I'm not sure. Um, maybe you've got your, your, your system muted, although it does say down at the bottom it is unmuted. So anyway, we, we've got, is it Zaya? Zaya? Yes, Zaya. Zaya, hi, lovely to meet you. Thank you so much for coming on screen for us. Um, nice to meet okay. you too. Thank you for allowing me. To oh, no, don't, don't be silly. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. Um, would you like to have, go with some C words for us today? Yes. Yeah. So would you like I to, have to go with that Can go? Cargo. Perfect. So cargo is the noun for anybody that's not sure. It's the goods that are carried on a vehicle. <clears throat> Typically, it tends to cargo be over. Cargo or cargo? Cargo. 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 So we'll have um, the phonetic spelling would be car, like the vehicle, and then go. So you're quite cargo. right. Cargo. 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 Okay. Perfect, thank you. Move on to our next one. Carriage. Carriage, yeah, perfect. So, carriage. For anybody carriage. that's been struggling with carriage, it's the noun, it's a four wheeled vehicle, mostly, you know, horse drawn. Um, carriage, carriage. Um, Try not to be confused, anybody that's listening, um, with the IA um, together. It can be a little bit tricky sometimes, but you're quite right, Zaya, and um, it's carriage. Carriage. Perfect. Next one. Thank you. Carve. Carve. Perfect. Carve. Carve. So um, this one maybe sometimes might be a little bit easily confused with, let's see, you know, calf, 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 which is a, like a, a baby cow, um, not to be confused, obviously, calf and calf, and um, you wouldn't want to carve calf, um, or your calf is also a section of your leg. So calf, the verb and calf the noun depending on how strongly you emphasize that v sound it's calf or calf okay calf. okay calf. thank you thank you our next one casual casual casual, casual. perfect casual casual Okay, so a bit of a tricky one again for um, the the um, combination of the U and the A, casual. It's an adjective for anybody that's wondering. Um, and it has got that S voice sound. So it sounds almost like a Z, casual. casual. Um, it refers to something that's informal. Um, so it could be clothing, it could be mannerisms, it could be your speech, casual. Perfect. Casual. Perfect, Zaya, thank you. Um, and I've just put a note at the bottom saying not to be confused with causal, um, which you can see here that the S and the U are the opposite way round. Um, oh. Causal refers to a relationship between two things where one is caused by the other. So um, you might say, um, I've gotten wet because it's raining. There's a causal relationship because I'm wet because it has rained. That's the causal relationship between two things. But the one that we're focusing on today, I'll just take that off so as not to confuse anybody, is um, casual. 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 Perfect. Okay. 
on to our next one. Oh, this one is difficult. <laughs> Catalog. Catalog. Perfect. It wasn't difficult. You you did it just fine. Catalog. Catalog. Perfect. So for anybody wondering, a catalog is just a the noun, it's a list of items, typically those ones that are for sale. So you would receive a catalogue of certain items um, that you would pick from to order and purchase. OK, so catalogue. Catalogue. Thank you. OK, our next one. Cautious. Cautious, yeah. So cautious is the adjective for um, potential dangers, potential, um, I don't know, hazards that are um, approaching cautious, cautious, um, perfectly pronounced cautious. Thank you. Cautious. Um, we'll just do one more. Ketter. So this one's a little bit trickier, maybe. It's the verb cater. Oh, cater. 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 Difficult because it's not pronounced as it sounds. Cater. Um. But yeah, it's the verb. Um. To provide somebody with something that they require, it's usually in British um, usage. It usually refers to serving somebody food or drink. That's why I put that picture there. Um, so you would um, work for maybe a catering company. Cater. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, well, so we've done cater. We've done cautious. Catalogue, which you thought was tricky, but actually you got it perfectly right. Casual. Carve. Carve. Carriage. Carriage. And cargo. Cargo. Perfect. So you got all of those perfectly right. Thank you so much for coming on the screen. Um, I'm going to give my show now. Um, but if you'd like to appear again on later, just leave me a comment. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Can we hear each other? Hello. Can you hear me? Am I audible? Oh, perfect. You're audible. Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Thank yeah, you. Laura, you are audible. Good morning. Good morning. Um, okay, so shall we move from here? Would you like to yeah, have a sure. go? So, the, yeah, this one is C's. 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 Yeah, so pet C's. So, um, this one can be a little bit tricky for people who aren't sure with the E and the A together can be difficult. Mahesh has gotten it perfectly right. Um, not, it shouldn't be confused with this word, which is seize, um, the verb, which is to grab something, um, to grasp it, um, seize and cease. So you must be careful when you're pronouncing it that there ha you can't, for cease, it's an unvoiced S sound. And C's has the voiced Z sound. So C's and C's like that. Okay. So um, Mahesh got it quite right. The, the top one is C's. C's. And the second one is C's. C's. So C's is to stop or to complete, to finish something. And to C's is to grab something. Okay. Thank you for that one. We'll move on to the next.
सीमेट्री सेमेट्री सीमेट्री सेमेट्री सॉरी या Yeah, that's perfect. You're right. So, um, again, it's a tricky one that I've given you there. Yeah, you've got to be careful not to pronounce it the same as cemetery. Yeah. So you can hear the difference between what he's saying there, cemetery, and symmetry. So the noun. Okay. Cemetery. cemetery. Terry at the top is the place where people who've passed away are buried, and the one below where it says symmetry. Can we hear you say symmetry? Symmetry. Symmetry. Perfect. Thank you. So you can really hear the difference between what he's saying there. We have on the one hand symmetry and symmetry. The difference between those two is really in these um, two here. So we've got that vowel sound in both. Of course, Y is a consonant, but we have cemetery, 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 and symmetry. So we've got sem, sim. Okay, that's the difference between those two. Um, we'll move on to the next one. Which is certain. Sorry, I think you broke up a little bit there. Can I hear that one again, please? Certainly. Certainly. Certainty. Certainty. So again, it's depending on. Oh, it's T. Okay, I saw L. No, yeah, yeah, you're quite right. So. Um, like he, he um, has pointed out, um, you can also have certainly with that L. Um, so um, let's see, can I highlight that? Yeah. So we've got a T here and an L there. Very easily confused because the T is not emphasised in certainty. And the L is not emphasised in certainly. So you can often struggle to hear the difference between those two. Um, yeah, so hopefully you can hear the difference. Um, oh, I think we he's gone. Is he gone? Maybe there's some kind of net issues. Oh, he's back. He's back. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Am I audible? You are. You are. I can yeah. hear you. Thanks for joining us again. <laughs> um, so can we hear you say both of them next to each other? And um, that will hopefully show us the difference between the two. Uh, certainty, certainly. Perfect. So for anybody that is confused about the two, that's perfect. That's exactly how we pronounce the difference between the two of them, okay? So we have certainty and certainly. Thank you. Our next one? Uh, certificate. Certificate, yeah, perfect. Perfect, certificate. Um, so um, a certificate is the noun an official document which proves a fact. So um, most common usage is probably going to be birth certificate. Certificate. Um, again, the emphasis is going to be on the first half of the word cert and ikat tends to just trail off a little bit. So like Mahesh correctly has said, um, certificate. And it just popped at the bottom there. You can see, think of certify. Um, so that C sound is going to be pronounced as an S, certificate. Um, and to certify something is to prove it. So a certificate would certify when you were born, for example. OK, perfect. Thank you. We'll go for our next one. 
इट्स चेंबर 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 हेल्प सो वी हैड नो इश्यूज विद दैट वन एम इट्स आल्सो फ्रॉम द फ्रेंच चेंबर व्हिच इज एम I just put that at the bottom. Chamber, which is room. If anybody is um, learning French as well, you might know that chamber is room in French, and um, that's where that word comes from. Um, and chamber usually refers to a bedroom in English. So we have chamber, which is the French. That ch sound makes a sh. But in English, we stay with ch chamber. Thank you, Mahesh. That's perfect. Um, next we have this one. Chaos. So again, chaos. 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 Perfect. Okay. So for chaos, we have um, it means complete disorder. It can mean in several senses, really. Um, you can have um, let me think. Um, chaos in the weather, which would be um, you know, bad weather, rain, um, whatever. Or you could have it in your own person. So you could be um, maybe not. Dressed correctly, you would look chaotic. So I'll type that one out as well. Excuse me, whilst I just um get that up. Hang on, everybody can still see that. Oh, we've popped off. As you can tell, technology is really not my strong point. Sorry about that. Um, hang on. Let me try and get us back up. I've also, I can see, I've got a couple of people queuing, waiting to come on um, and pronounce for me. Um, thank you so, so much for coming on. Um, definitely, you'll get the chance to be on. If not today, then definitely next time. Um, let's see. Let me just try and get the screen back on because we can't do pronunciation if you can't see the words. Um, Hmm. Let's see. Okay. Um. God. I'm struggling here, guys. Okay. Um. Okay, let's see. Oh God. So, sorry, sorry, sorry. We're back on. We're back on. I think. Are we in? Can everybody see that? Yeah, I think we can see that. Can't we? It's loading. Yeah. It seems. It's loading. Oh God. I think everybody's having that chaos. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, we had chaos. Um, we also have the word very similar, chaotic, um, which is the quality of having chaos. Um, so chaotic. Uh, thank you, everybody commenting saying that you can see it now. Thank you for putting my mind at rest about that. Um, chaotic. I have chaotic energy right now. I'm disordered. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. Chaos. So you were quite right. Chaos. Next one we'll do is character. 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 Okay. character. So again, he's quite right. Got it correct first time. So um, character is the noun, the mental qualities of a person such as their integrity, their kindness, and um, I've put their generosity, but it can also be bad things about somebody, their character. So it could be um, a bad sense of humour, um, being unkind, 
um, so your character. But it can also be the noun to refer to a fictional person in a novel or film, any kind of art, I suppose, um, a character. OK, so that is obviously um, a personage that you would take on that is not your own. So an actor would act as a character. OK. Uh, Laura, like in a sentence, we have words as well as a word has characters. So that one is also somewhat similar to this character or that comes under different category? What what did you say it was somewhat somewhat similar to what? Sorry. Characters characters of a word. Like uh, Absolutely, yeah. See, so he comes up with all kinds of different ones that is it. Three characters. It is, yeah. So yeah, you're quite right. Um character can also refer to a letter or a symbol. So um you could so for example, when you're writing a password, um, it might ask you for a certain amount of characters. So it would ask you for a certain amount of letters and numbers combined to, to make up the password. You're quite right, Mahesh. Thank you so much for saying that. You, you're right. Um, it is character can also refer to numbers and letters as well as um, mental qualities and um, a fictional person. Um, that's a really, really good example. So um, in a sentence, it'd be that the password requires eight characters. You're right. That is what you meant, isn't it? I have I've understood you correctly there. Yeah. OK, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah, Laura, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on to the next one. But um, for anybody else who's watching as well, please follow his lead. Um, and if I've left anything out, you've got any questions or I've made any mistakes, please let me know because more often than not, you're probably more comfortable with these things than I am. <laughs> okay, so the next one we've got. Charm. I think R is silent over there. Charm. Yes. Yeah. So you're quite right. So if it was completely silent, we might have charm. But you're quite right. It's that charm. A R sound. Charm. Yeah. Lovely. So um, for anybody wondering, that's also the noun and the verb. The noun is to possess the quality of being charming, the ability to win somebody over. So, um, I don't know, everybody probably knows somebody who they find charming and, um, you, you know, you know what that quality is like. It's not necessarily a physical thing that somebody does. Um, people can just be more charming for whatever reason. Um, and the, the verb to charm is to attract somebody by being charming. You, you get where this is going. And charming, the adjective, is the quality of being able to charm or to have charm. Okay, so quite an easy one there. Thank you for that, Mahesh. Next one. Uh, not sure about this, Laura. I never heard of this. Uh, no problem. Choir, I can't, I think. Yeah, I never, yeah, that's exactly right. Joy. You never heard it. The, the word is choir. I think you had it right maybe the first time and you've doubted yourself. It's choir. 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 So, a choir. Maybe. For choir. Yeah, that's choir. So for those people who maybe don't live in um, a, a particularly religious household, maybe you don't um, practice religion yourself, um, usually a choir is, refers to maybe, maybe Christian, I think, worship. Although I'm sure there will be in some other religions, but that's by the by. A choir is a group of singers, usually in a religious place. So you can see on the picture, um, a group of women that are all singing 
palms up because it tends to be in worship. And so a noun, a choir of singers, choir. So it's one of those words you won't hear very frequently, but it's useful to know and to get your head around for when you do eventually see it. Thank you, Mahesh. Yeah, it's choir. Okay, next one. Chronic. 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 Perfect. Chronic. Chronic. So, chronic can mean the adjective extreme and long lasting, typically refers to illness and to pain. So, people would suffer with chronic back pain, like the guy in the picture that I've put on or a chronic headache, chronic migraines, chronic anything really, um, any chronic pain, or people tend to use it in a colloquial sense, um, is that an event or experience of theirs is drawn out longer than they might have wanted it to be. So chronic, you might say, um, the test became chronic because it was so long, and so painful. Hope that this live stream doesn't become chronic for people, but you see what I mean. Okay. Um don't know is this our no we've got a couple more. Circuit. Circuit, yeah. Circuit. Circuit. So he's quite right, he's pronounced that again perfectly. Circuit, the noun is an area, typically a circle shape, but obviously it's all different ones because it's a loop of anything. Um, and a circuit can also be, to run a circuit would be um, to run the, the full lap of it. So um, yeah, quite, quite closely interchangeable meanings there. Um, also, for, for those people who maybe are learning more in the science field, a circuit in physics is a closed path that allows electricity to flow around it. So a circuit. Um, you can also use it in different, in different ways, as in um, to short circuit is to cut the electricity all in one um, direct way. Um, usually resulting in something stopping working the short circuit. And um, again it comes from that that um prefix circ which um means circle. I think that's also from the Greek is it circle um so it comes from the Latin comes from the Latin circus which means ring so you can see how that will that will mean a loop okay two joined um areas okay and then we have civic civic civilization civic civic so civic you're quite correct and um, it has that s sound for the first C, but that hard C sounds civic for the second C, almost as if it's pronounced as a K. So um, quite a tricky one, that um, civic, usually relating to a town or administration and most commonly used to describe a citizen of that town, for example, their duty. So your civic duty would be your duty to that place. Um, sorry, excuse me. Um, your duty to that place. So you might have a civic duty to do community service or whatever it is, civic, civic. And um, there's a lot of other variations of the same word. So we have civilized, civilized. Oh God, I'm such a hard time. Civilization, civil. All again got those same C sounds at the start. Civic, civilized, civilization, civil. Correct. Thank you, Mahesh, for those. Um, 
I think we've got one that I've yeah. had in the comment below. So we've got, um, would you like to have a go at that word? And then I'll discuss it maybe. Uh, yeah, Laura. So basically in this word, uh, G is silent, right? So it will be gnarly. G will be silent. Like we have knowledge. K is silent over there. Perfect, yeah. So he's quite right and made a really good comparison for anybody that's struggling with this one. With the G being gnarly, um, with the G being silent in gnarly and the K being silent in knowledge. I'll just type that below for anybody who's not sure what is wrong with my typing skills today. So like you said before, knowledge is pronounced without the K, just null with that N, knowledge. Um, the same as gnarly is pronounced without the G. The G is silent, gnarly. Um, we also have, similarly, again, we have nor. Come on, I'm waiting for it to appear, sorry. Nor. So to gnaw is to the verb to bite. Um, between animals, gnaw things, not really humans, um, like rodents or whatever, gnaw at things, which is to repeatedly bite. Um, yeah, not always food even, but anyway, that's beside the point. The G is silent, quite like Mahesh pointed out. The same as knowledge, gnarly and gnaw. Um, yeah, so we have, oh, we also have another example, actually. Okay, I'll pop that one on the screen as well. So we have gnome. A gnome is a small garden ornament of a little man. <laughs> that sounds weird, me just saying it then. So I'll put a picture in the, on the PowerPoint because, um, I suppose if you haven't seen one before, they might be kind of strange. Let's see. Uh, copy image. Oops. Let's see. I'm going to put the gnome in. Oops. There we go. There's a gnome. Anybody that was unsure what it is. Can I come back on now? There we go. So, gnome. <laughs> There's a gnome on the screen. Um, so we had no, nor, Mahesh's example, knowledge, and gnarly. Okay, where the first letter is going to be silent. Tricky, I know. So um, if you can get to grips with that one, I think that's really quite impressive. Um, thank you, Mahesh, for that. Um, okay, I think that's it for the ones on my PowerPoint. If anybody has any others that they'd like a hand with, please just pop them in the comments box below. Um, and for now, I'll have to say thank you and goodbye for now, Mahesh. Thank you so much for your help and for pronouncing them all. You did so well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. No problem. Bye. See you soon. So, um, we've had two people on, three people on today actually that have been really really impressive pronunciation we've only got 15 minutes left and as um Gaznavi asked to be on before i'll bring him back now if that's okay um just just pop it in the comments if you're not comfortable with it and i'll just move on um for some reason this powerpoint slide is like ran off the page so i might have to delete them as we're going but never mind it's fine bring on okay <laughs> Okay, it's back again. That's right. I'm sorry for that. I was it's hearing okay. <laughs> okay. It's okay. You both it. Okay, so yeah. should we move on to these? So we did a couple of these before. So I'll get rid of that. We'll go quick fire through them. Okay. Is that ready? Let's go. Okay. B2 chop. Oh, I only... You need to do okay. the words. Thank you. Okay. Chronic. Perfect. Chunk. 
Perfect. Socket. Perfect. Circuit. Circulate. 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 So, anybody wondering about that one? We have that U sound in that one. So, we have um, like this. Sec, you, late. Oh, circulate. Perfect, circulate. Okay. Circulation. Perfect, so we've got the hang of that one now. You can see how if you oh. practice with the main form yeah. of the word, you can put it into different versions. Yeah. 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 Okay. Citizenship. Citizenship, perfect. Civic. Perfect. Civic. Civilian. Civilian. Yeah. Civilian. Uh, civilian. Civilization. Perfect. Clarify. Clarify. Yep. So for anybody concerned about that one, clarify. Clarify. Clarity. Clarity. Clash. Yeah. Clash. Yeah. Uh, classification. Classification. Yeah. Classify. Classify. Same as we had clarify before. This is yeah. classify. Clark. Yeah. Mark. So you've got this one right, but I just want to make everybody aware because it is a really difficult one. Clark, okay. um, a lot of people in English speakers really struggle with Clark because um, it just looks like it's pronounced Clark. Um, especially because we also have the similar word, clergy. Yeah. Clergy is a group of um, religious people, usually in um, Christianity, clergy. Um, um, if the, you're talking about one singular, it's clergyman. Um, but it's not clergyman. 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 Okay, clergyman. Ter Cler yeah. Clergy. Yeah. Um, clergy. And then this one we have Clark, almost as if it should be pronounced Clark. Oh. Just to it to okay, just to okay. Cliff. Cliff. Cling. Cling. Clinic. Clinic. Clinical. Clinical. Clip. Clip. Closure. Closure. Okay, so perfect. So this last one, it's coming from, oh gosh, close. Closure. Close. Close. Yeah, so closure and close. Mm -hmm. It has got mm -hmm. that voice sound, close yeah. and closure. And if you really want a difficult one, cluster. Cloister. Hmm. Cloister, which is a religious building, typically I think for nuns, would be pronounced cloister like cloister. Cloister. So they would cry cloister, cloister. Yeah. Okay. Cloister, cloister. Yeah. So of course it's not spelled this way, it's spelled with the O I, cloister. And then yeah. um, it would round with the stone like this. Mm -hmm. So that's it for the PowerPoint. Um, we've got a couple of ones suggested in in the comments. If I'll just pop those on screen and you can have a go at those. Chivalry. Chivalry. Yeah. Chivalry. Chivalry. Very chivalry. Okay. We also have um, the derivative word, if it'll pop on the screen, chivalrous. 
Chivalrous. Chivalrous. Yeah. Tricky one, that, isn't it? Yeah, I think that's it. Chivalrous. chivalrous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a tricky one, yeah. So chivalry is to act with um, respect and mm -hmm. um, uh, to be polite, but it's mostly used in reference to men and women. So um, in relationships, men would act um, with chivalry towards a woman. They would be chivalrous, mm -hmm. which is to have, um, yeah, a kind of way of behaving that is shows a great amount of respect towards women. And okay. chameleon. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, so again, we've got that tricky CH where we had mm. chivalry before. Now we've got chameleon um, with that yeah. K. Um, so yeah, chameleon is that little creature, reptile thing that changes colour whenever it steps on something that is that colour. And yeah. um, who doesn't know what that is? It's probably one of the hardest words to pronounce in English. I can't imagine anybody that would look at that and immediately know how to pronounce it. So if you didn't know at home, don't worry, nobody does the first time. This isn't your first time, is it definitely? No. <laughs> no, no. Exactly. That's why I thought nobody <laughs> Okay, you got it right. Yeah, exactly. In fact, he's had plenty of practice with chameleon, don't you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Chameleon. So. Yeah. That one's a really, really tricky one. Um, right. So don't don't worry about getting that wrong. Um, just just quickly out of interest, if anybody as well, if anybody just wants to comment any other difficult ones below, we'll have him pronounce them. I'm sure he's not had as much practice at every single one. We'll catch him out one day. Um, but until then, he's done really well today. Everybody has, so thank you for coming on if you did come on. Um, uh, so just as I've got you on screen now and I can ask you um, whether you think that this is helpful, these sessions, and um, if you've got any feedback at all about um, the lessons at all or the page or anything, yeah. just uh, this is your time now to tell me. Yeah, your session is great. And I'm, I'm improving myself by getting this session. And really, it is lovely. Oh, I'm so glad that you think that it's helpful. Yeah. Do you have any any suggestions of what could be improved or what I could do to be a bit more helpful? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that it will be better if you uh, bring on someone and uh, just like I told you uh, last day that uh, poetry, something like recitation and something like storytelling and like that, that will be very good uh, for both of us. So then can, we can improve our, ourselves in that pronunciation okay so um so to have somebody come on and read a poem or read aloud a passage from mm -hmm. yeah yeah that's like yeah because as and, as you and, can write them. and and one more thing Lara, you can uh, bring someone to singing too that will be good for singing good. as well yeah yeah in english oh. yeah that will be good too well, if you'd be willing to sing, then you can come on and sing. Yeah. But I can't imagine an awful lot of people would like that. <laughs> would like to come on and sing, and they probably certainly yeah. don't want to hear me sing after I had to go and yeah. uh, Boulevard of Broken Dreams today. Um, but a great comment from the person who left that. Yeah. Thank you for that out. Um, okay, so so any other comments, any other feedback, please let me know. Message the page. We're always, always looking to improve. So um, let me know anything. If you feel like the PowerPoint doesn't work or you prefer me to write it or you'd like harder examples or easier examples or like as Navi said, if you'd like um, somebody to read from, you know, a book or I, I can pick passages out. I don't know if you can see that. Um, my desk, you can see. I've got books everywhere. Um, okay. I have plenty of books for us to work through. If you think that you would find that helpful, um, you just let me know, and I'll be happy to 
take that on. Also, what do you think about doing three one-hour sessions instead of one three-hour session? Ah, three-hour session will be good. Three one-hour. Mm -hmm. We're thinking of doing an hour on Monday, an hour on Tuesday, and an hour on Wednesday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that would be better. I think that would be better. Very helpful. Because yeah, We've yeah. had quite an issue last week, didn't we, with the phone overheating? Um, and I probably a couple of other people have had that issue as well, and we we've, we've had some um, some difficulties with the with the net as well with the with the web connection. So um, mm -hmm. maybe our sessions would be a bit yeah. easier. Yeah, the net connection is the big problem. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and also, finally, just to remind everybody that from the 1st of September, we'll start um, offering some mock tests. Um, so you can get a view of what the number ranking you have where um, zero, which is not if you are zero, but zero is doing a temper test and um, doesn't know words in English. And nine is expert. Um, so, if you're looking to take that test um, at some point in the future for your professional career or to move somewhere, it might be really helpful to take a mock test. Would you be interested in that at all, Gaznavi? Yeah, of course. Absolutely. I think you'd do really um, well in it, to be yeah. honest. Um, the, Anything this, related to this uh, pronunciation, I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm already on it. Already, I think we're breaking up a little All bit. Time. But, yeah, I think you'd be really good at it. I think that you should give it a go. I think everybody should give it a go because if they did it a couple of times, you might be able to see that you know gradual improvement as you as you've taken separate ones. Because sometimes it can be hard to realise how much how much you've actually improved and how much better you've gotten, and it can be really encouraging when you have that those figures in front of you you know and um, so we'll we'll post a facebook post about um beginning those mock tests if you're interested all you have to do is send us a message and yeah. um and we'll get one sorted out for you you'll get that organized and um, well thank you for coming on today again and okay. um, same as last week it was really good of you to come on and okay. um out for us thank you for that yeah. um, and I'll see you soon. Um, and uh, for anybody else who has any feedback, any about my teaching style, about the page, about anything to do with um, these lessons, please just send us a message because we'd always love to hear about what we can improve on and become more helpful for you. Um, so any feedback is very much appreciated. In the meantime, if there's any words that you need pronouncing ASAP, let us know because we're also going to be starting pre-recorded sessions and be posting those so they'll always be available um, whenever you're, you just want a little refresher of, of your English um, pronunciation. Um, thank you, by the way, for leaving this comment. It was a really interactive and helpful session logged off early from my office work to join it. Thank you so much for saying that. And um, it really does um mean a lot that people are finding this helpful and that I've been able to provide you with any help at all. But if you haven't found this helpful or you've struggled to follow at all, please let us know and um I'll I'll try my best to cater to that. Um, in the meantime look out for the post which will let you know um, definitely decided. I think it's going to be one hour at 10 o'clock on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Um, and if you do log into those, I'll see you then. Um, it was lovely to have you all. Thank you for joining this live. Um, and I'll see you all next week. Carry on practicing your English. Everybody's doing great. <laughs>